Hi guys, and welcome to the first edition of our SoccerNet V2 challenge. I'm Anthony. And I'm Adrian. And today, we'll give you everything you need to know about our action spotting and replay grounding challenge in soccer broadcast videos. Before going any further, let us thank our amazing international collaborators, Silvio Giancola, Meisam Jamshidi, and Jacob Duholm for their amazing work. You will hear from them later during this session. Let's not forget our awesome supervisors, Kamal Nasrolahi from Milestone Systems, Bernard Ganem from Kaust, Thomas Mosloun from Alborg University, and Mark van Drogenbroek from the University of Liège, who all funded this whole operation. All right, so what can you expect from this session? We will start with a short presentation of the data and the tasks, followed by an overview of the challenge by Jacob, along with some cool statistics. Next, our sponsor, Second Spectrum, will present its activities. We are very grateful that they agreed to support us on this adventure and reward the winner of each task with $500. After, it will be time for Silvio to announce the winner's podium of the action spotting task. Then, the authors of the second and first place will present their methods to show you how they achieved their amazing results. Maysam will then announce the winner's podium of the replay grounding task. We'll leave the floor as well to the second and first place winners to explain their innovative methods. That will then be the end of our SoccerNet V2 challenge. Or is it? Maybe we will be back next year with new annotations and new tasks. In the meantime, keep track of our work by subscribing to our YouTube channel called ACAD Research and follow us on social media. And enjoy! enjoy. Data might be the new oil, but annotations are the secret sauce that enable training supervised models for various tasks. Until recently, soccer was an arid area of research, missing a dataset of reference to create a true community. Even though a few datasets have been released, none of them provide many games with many annotations to tackle many tasks. So we wanted to create one dataset to rule them all. Ladies and gentlemen, announcing SoccerNet V2, the largest corpus of manual annotations for broadcast soccer video understanding and production. It comprises about 300,000 annotations temporarily anchored within 800 hours of videos. But wait, there's more. A dataset without tasks is a bit gloomy, like a remote conference. You miss goodies, people, and events to really have fun. Thus, we propose three tasks and release reproducible benchmarks. First, let's focus on soccer actions. We provide 110,000 single temporal anchors split into 17 classes. For example, for penalty, we annotate the frame of the last contact between the player's foot and the ball. And for the goal that follows, the moment the ball crosses the line. We included all your favorite soccer actions, corners, free kicks, cards, penalties, clearances, goals, and so on. Besides, we state whether each action is shown in the broadcast video or unshown. For example, this happens when the producer shows a replay of a goal that lasts past the kickoff that follows. Naturally, the related task is action spotting. This task addresses the general problem of retrieving moments with a specific semantic meaning in long untrimmed videos. We tested several methods and the winner is Calf. But that was a close call. Here is the full table of results. Then performances only on visible actions and unshown actions and per class results. Let's move on to cameras. We annotate every camera change for 200 games, totaling more than 116,000 temporal anchors. With that, we annotate which type of camera is used for each sequence, main corner, behind the goal, and so on, in 13 classes. Therefore, our second task is camera shot temporal segmentation. It consists in classifying each video frame among our 13 camera types. Again, we tested several methods. CALF is better than simple baselines. 
indicating that the task requires more than simplistic approaches. This task is coupled with a camera shot boundary detection task, where the objective is to find the timestamps of the transitions between the camera shots. In our experiments, a classic histogram-based method is the best by far. Sometimes, the best one comes in all bottles. Finally, we delimit each replay with camera-like timestamps, and we also indicate which action of the live game is replayed. Almost 33,000 replays are associated with their corresponding action. In that regard, we introduce a third and novel replay grounding task. It consists in retrieving the timestamp of the action shown in a given replay shot within the whole game. Derived application may be further built on top of this task, such as automatic highlight production, as the most replayed actions are usually the most relevant. For this task, we design our own approach, based on Siamese neural networks. You will find all the details in the paper and in the code. Here is an example of results showing that we can correctly learn to link a replay with its action without necessarily spotting all the actions of the same class. As we have shown, Soconet V2 is a fantastic dataset for developing new ideas. Amazing! Let's now see how we turn all these data, tasks, and annotations into an international challenge with Jacob. Thank you, Anthony. The first thing we did was to set up a website from where you can download the Suckernet V2 dataset, videos, and annotations, together with a development kit consisting of baseline data loaders, pre-computed features, evaluation functions, and more, all to ease the barrier of entry to working with this challenge. Looking at the statistics from the website, we can see this is indeed an international challenge with downloads from all around the globe, with the top 10 represented by North America, Asian, and European countries. We also set out to build a community, setting up a Discord channel with currently 60 users, where people can discuss the challenge and ask questions. This also served as a platform for us, the organizers, to broadcast messages such as leaderboard updates or do various polls to get familiar with the participants and to arrange live sessions or tutorials, as we call them. Six casual live sessions were held, where the organizers and guests casually present a topic, such as the challenge of action spotting or replay grounding. It could be the baselines found in the development kit, and each of these were then followed by an open discussion. All tutorials were recorded and can be found on YouTube, freely available and already with more than 1,000 views combined. The challenge is hosted by Evil AI, providing a public leaderboard of the challenge updated in real time. It provides an evaluation server where the participants can submit their results to be evaluated on the different tasks, with the limitation in the number of submissions to avoid overfitting. There is also the possibility of private submissions even though these were not in consideration for the prize money, sponsored by Second Spectrum. It has been a pleasure to follow the challenge grow over time. Shout out to all the participants who really have pushed the boundaries on this new dataset, far surpassing the baselines. Even though we conclude the challenge today, the evaluation server will stay up for future work, as the task of action spotting and reflank grinding are still not solved. These were some very cool statistics. Thanks, Jacob. Next, let's have a look at Second Spectrum's activities. Second Spectrum lies at the intersection of sports and data and technology. And right now, there's basically a one-size-fits-all solution. But as we know, we don't all like the same thing. It's becoming an on-demand world. And that's a fundamental, almost inalienable right today that was non-existent 20 years ago, let alone 50 years ago. With the information age, big data has hit sports. The problem is the data itself is not valuable to people. It's the ability to use data to turn the content into things people care about. What we're bringing at Second Spectrum is the ability to transform data into capabilities that can really change people's experiences. The good news is you can get very specific. 
and you can get target exactly what you want, when you want it, and where you want it. That bridge is essentially a computer that understands the game, because a computer that understands the game and understands you can give you what you want. And that, to me, is ultimate choice. It's going to be a big part of the sporting experience. We combine machine learning, computer vision, design, user experience to create a platform that is able to understand both sports and people and transform content into ways that people actually want to experience them. That's where I see companies like Second Spectrum playing a role. They're going to continue to be that next growth area in making the experience richer and much more personal tomorrow than it is today. It's now finally time for the great reveal. Let's hear Silvio for the announcement of the action spotting winners. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Adrian. And hi to everyone in the audience. I am sure we are all very excited to hear about the amazing results of the SoccerNet V2 Challenge 2021 and can't wait for the winner announcement. Let's start with the first track of our challenge, action spotting. Many of you already know this task, but let's refresh our memory a bit. We introduced that task tr back in 2018 with the first version of SoccerNet. Different from temporal activity localization, where the activity are defined with a start and an end, action spotting tackles the localization of atomic events anchored with a single time step. As you can see in this sequence, a penalty is defined as the exact frame the player shoots the ball, and a goal is defined as the exact frame the ball crosses the line. Action spotting complements temporally activi activity localization for action that occurs instantly or when boundaries are subjective. Along with goals and penalties, we define 17 classes of action to spot for this challenge. That includes fouls, cards, shots, free kicks, throw-ins, corners, and so on. All those actions are anchored with a single, single timestamp defined by the rules of soccer. For the challenge, we introduced a novel set of 50 games never seen before. We provided more than 100,000 annotations for those 17 action classes. Those classes are rather in balance, but yet of very similar importance. For instance, we have many balls out of the play and throw in, yet only a few penalties and red cards that might still be very important. For all those annotations, we provided extra information such as the acting team and whether or not that action was shown in the live broadcast. In order to assess the performances of a spotting method, we relied on the average mean AP. Similar than temporal activity localization, we considered the mean average precision at a given tolerance level, but different from TAL that consider different temporal IUU we introduce a delta tolerance in second. A positive spot is considered as true if localized close enough to a ground truth within that delta tolerance. Then the mean IPs are averaged for tolerances ranging from five to 60 seconds with a five seconds step. We re-implemented most of the baselines from SoccerNet V1 in particular, the pooling methods and, so and um, CALF. SoccerNet V2 is way more challenging than its first version. It contains more than 15 times more action instances and 14 more classes, resulting in 20 points drop using the same metric. Some of them are very similar to each other, such as the cards, yellow, red, or yellow than red. There are similar free kicks, direct or in indirect, and different shots, whether on target or off target. Moreover, spotting actions that were not directly shown in the broadcast is even more difficult. When visual clues are not available, a higher level of soccer understanding is necessary. We hosted our challenge on Eval AI to publicly evaluate on the open test set and our novel challenge set. To avoid any overfitting on the challenge set, we segregated the labels and only allowed two submissions per day or 10 submissions per month. 
There were in total 17 who participated in the challenge with more than 50 submissions. And now, without further ado, let's have a look at the leaderboard. We will recognize the top three of this uh, task, starting with the third position, which is AI Lab with RMS Nets. Congratulations to them. They present a novel approach based on regression and masking for soccer understanding. They were ranked first on SoccerNet V1. We had a chance to host Matteo Tomei from the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia during one of our tutorials last month. Feel free to have a look at their novel methods by watching our record. And now, in second position, we have the OPPO Research Institute with Visual Analysis of Humans. Congratulations to them. The OPPO Institute came out with a clever way of fine-tuning features and tackled the CARB classes in an interesting fashion. We actually have them here with us. They will now present their work. Hello, everyone. We are the team visual analysis of humans. We, I'm Shi Min Chen. Our members have Wei Li, Chen Chen, Xun Qiang Tao, Yan Dong Guo. Next, we will describe our solution to action spotting task. The data set have two major features. One is card classes are unbalanced. Another is card classes focuses on the small card color in hand of one specific person. Due to data set peculiarity, we propose two methods to this task. One is a SOTA 3D end-to-end -end local features extraction convolution for 15 classes. Another is a spatial temporal solution for three card classes. In the sporting of 15 actions contain a class fused by three card classes, we propose to focus on local features extracted by MM Action 2 framework, which is more likely to learn short temporal information in videos and more sensitive to visible features. During the training phase, we generate positive video clips of two types. One is a three second snippet at at 24 FPS, centered as a ground true timestamp. The other is a six second snippet at 12 FPS, starting from one second before the ground true timestamp. We train CSN and slow fast ResNet 50 with clips of two types, respectively. During the inference phase, we saw the proposals of two types by sliding a window with the step size of 0.2 times the clip dur duration se separately. Then my partner, Willy, will introduce another solution. OK, my name is Willy. I will introduce our method in three card classes. We notice that red card and yellow to red card are all visible samples and count for 0.05% and 0.04% of all classes respectively, which makes them more likely to be seen as yellow card. Considering that visible card classes focus on the small card color in the hand of one specific per person, which are important color partial features, but insignificant in global stage. Thus, we propose to classify yellow card and red card with special information and yellow to red card with temporal information with alpha action model. We propose a card object find rule, which contain a post object find rule and a object find rule, which can screening people with one hand raised and a yellow or red object in that hand, and or find ob card object boxes without person box or post. In training phase, we generate positive three second video clips snippeted at 25 FPS centered at ground truth timestamp. Then we can get 15 
uh, keyframes from clips. To find the specific person raising a card, we perform detection, post estimate, and card object find rule on obtained keyframes. And the best boxes in all keyframes and clips will be fit into the model. Besides, to solve the problem of unbalance between yellow card and other two cards, we generate red card clips from origin yellow card clips, and those red boxes are set to the same area of that in origin. In inference phase, we can get the suspect timestamps from action scrolling and to end model mentioned before, and then generate 10 second video clips snipped at 25 FPS centered at suspect timestamps, then generate 50 keyframes from clips and also apply card object find rule on them. There are two methods to generate inference proposals with stage two and without stage two. More details can be seen in report and the result of our model on three classes can show the ability of our model. That's all, thanks for your listening. Thank you for your presentation. And finally, in the first position, the winner of the spotting task in the SoccerNet V2 Challenge 2021 is... Baidu Research VidPress Sports. Congratulations to them. The Baidu Research VidSports, VidPress Sports, came out with a very interesting way of fine tuning and combining multiple frame features that lead to optimal results. We have them here with us. They will now present their work. Hello everyone. In this video, we will share our method that achieved the state-of-the-art performance in the action sporting task in SoCNet V2 Challenge. We are the Baidu research team. We have five people participating in this challenge, including five full-time employees and interns. We initiate a project called VidTransports in Baidu research. Currently, we have a large-scale multimodal soccer dataset and highlight generation systems and production platform. We use a two-stage pipeline to solve this action spotting problem. We first use multiple action recognition models to extract features for each video. Then we use an action spotting module to classify the chunks of features into events. The baseline method uses per-frame features extracted by ResNet pre-trained on ImageNet. However, we believe that features that are tailored for the soccer broadcast videos can improve the performance of the spotting module. We fine tune multiple action recognition models on snippets of the SoccerNet V2 videos with a classification task using the event labels. And in the test stage, we also extract features from videos on a sliding window, sliding window rather than on single frames. In this way, our features are more relevant on a task seen and contain temporary information. But there, there's a potential risk of overfitting because in the next stage, we use the same set of data to train the action spotting module. Our feature extractors include five different types of models, including TPN, GTA, VTN, IRCSN, and I3D slow. They are all top performers on standard action recognition benchmarks. We concatenate these extracted features along the feature dimension to obtain a large powerful feature. For the action spotting module, we try both NetVolat++ and the transformer. In terms of performance, the transformer and NetVolat++ modules are very similar. In the submissions, the transformer module was slightly better than NetVolat++. The transformer network is structured as follows. We have the input clip features, then a sine cosine positional encoding is added. Then we have three encoding layers with four heads and hidden dimensions of 64. The network tends to overfit in this case, so we use mixup augmentation for the input features. Mixup augmentation is used 
in image classification to linearly combine inputs and labels. Other hyperparameters are tuned similar as we train Netflat++. We use a short clip length of 7, add an optimizer, and reduce learning rate on plateau. Here we show our experimental results. Compared to the reference method that uses a per-frame ResNet feature, our method using only one fine-tuned feature, TPN with a ResNet 50 backbone, already boosts its performance by about 10%. Combining five fine-tuned features gives another 9% boost, reducing the chunk size and NMS window size by half, further improves the performance by about 1%. The best score we obtain on the challenge set is close to 75%, and it wins the first place of the action spotting challenge. For this best entry, we combine six features, which are fine-tuned on all games of Soccer Night V2, plus 77 extra games. Please check out our GitHub repo at github.com slash Baidu research slash vtransports. Our features will be released to support reproducible research. Also, stay tuned for our tech report, including implementation details on archive. For any questions or corroborations, please contact vpress.support at baidu.com. Thank you for your presentation. What an amazing leaderboard we have. We congratulate everyone who participated in this challenge. It was quite a journey. The progress was amazing and the leaderboard was changing almost every week. It started with AI Image Lab RMS and Ivol Counts, the first participants to submit results. Then visual analysis of human proposed a better baseline. But soon AI Image Lab RMS improved and took the leads for almost a week until visual analysis of human fought back for that same lead. Then Baidu Research provided a very strong first submission. Visual analysis of human and AI image lab RMS tried to get back the lead, but without success. It was too late. Baidu Research was growing stronger by the day. I will leave you with this final leaderboard with Baidu leading the challenge. Thanks everyone for participating and hopefully see you next year. Wow, what great methods they both proposed. Let's see if these kinds of strategies paid off in the replay grounding task with Mesam. Hi everyone, thank you for watching us to this moment. I'm glad to be here with you to speak about SoccerNet V2 Challenge. We know already about the winner for action spotting task. No, it's the replay grounding term. Stay with us to know who won the replay grounding challenge on this year. First, we want to speak about the second task of our replay of our challenge, replay grounding. Many of you already know about this task, but let's have a short review on what's going on. We introduced replay grounding task as a novel task uh, with our data soccer and V2 data set. The task would be very helpful for uh, retrieving Sally and moments of a game and also for highlight generation. For describing the task, imagine you have a replay and you want to find the corresponding moment of that replay within the broadcast review. So we are somehow grounding the replay to a real time instance by spotting a point or points as detections in the grounding task. In the SoccerNet V2 dataset, we have annotated more than 32,000 of replay sequences linked with their correspondent actions. You can see here the frequency of our 17 classes of actions that are linked to the replay. From almost 10,000 replay of faults to 100 instances for yellow to red card action. Although in the grounding challenge, the class of uh, ground replay is not required, our annotations 
have this information that can be helpful for the class aware solutions or other related tasks. Similar to what we had in action spotting, for the replay grounding task, we use average AP instead of average MAP because we don't care about the classes here and we just have one class for replay. You know about the average precision calculation. In here, we have different APs uh, based on the 12 different tolerances that we have. So we came up with 12 APs and then get an average over these APs to came up with final average AP. We introduced three different baselines for replay grounding tasks in our data set. The baseline were designed based on such a Siamese structure with different data loading, model, and feature fusion strategies. Here you can see our baseline performance. We managed to reach 41.8 uh, average AP with our calf-based method and applying a data mining approach. Our baseline deployed different strategies in data loading and final feature fusion that could be really inspiring for uh, actually uh, users that want to uh, work on replay grounding tasks. And so we come to announce the winners. Let's go straight for that. In the third place, of our challenge, we have Shin Huaji. Congrats to them. They were among the first submission that had, a, had better performance than our baseline. Then, for the second place, we have the OPPO Research Institute with visual analysis of human. Congratulations to them. They fine-tuned the features, used Siamese structure, and applied the final refinement in their work. Let's go and watch their presentation to have more detail about their work. Hello, everyone. We are the visual analysis of humans team which belongs to the OPPO Research Institute. Our members include Shi Min Chen, Chen Chen, Xin Chang Tao, Yan Dong Guo, and me, I'm Chen Zhang. In the replay grounding task, we followed the network structure in the baseline. The Siamese framework combined with the context-aware loss function uh, and a more negative stretch. The difference is, is that we replaced the frame features used in the baseline with the 3D spatial temporal features we extracted and uh, used uh, a refinement strategy on the network output results, which can improve average AP greatly. We use the model trained in the action spotting task as the feature extractor, and use the sliding window to extract the features on the long video. We removed the, we removed the last uh, fully uh, connected layer of the training model in the action spotting task. So for each input, we can get a, a 2048 dimensional feature vector. So the feature we extracted from the long video is two LPS as in the baseline with the key frame at the center of the second window. We choose CSN, which has a better performance on the action spotting task as a feature extractor. For the 3D spatial temporal features extracted using the CSN with three seconds of snap it at 24 IPS as input, we call it CSN as in 16 short uh, and with uh, six seconds of snap it at uh, 12 IPS as uh, input, we call it CSN as in 16 wide. Considering that the video actors are used to editing the soccer broadcast uh, according to the habits of the audience, 
we believe that the time step difference between the replay and the replay spot uh, should conform to a certain distribution. So um, we plotted the time step differences uh, of all the uh, annotation of uh, the replay grounding task after sorting for uh, different soccer leaks. We found most of the time step differences between uh, replay and replay uh, spot are less than 100 seconds. Therefore, we deployed a, 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 a refinement strategy to remove all cases which are larger than a threshold in the original output results. And by some, and by some uh, experiments on the test set, uh, we set threshold at uh, uh, 18 seconds. The following table is part of our experiments uh, uh, results. We found that the uh, that for the same network structure, the uh, performance of 3D special temporal features with a, a video stream leak of uh, six seconds as input is better than uh, three seconds as the input and uh, image features. So the 3D special temporal features are uh, awaitings for a uh, replay grounding task and the text where a loss function is also uh, effective for 3D CNN. And, and our uh, fundamental uh, strategy is uh, also uh, effective. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well done. And finally, in the first position, the winner of the grounding test in the Soccer Net V2 Challenge 2021 is Baidu Research Team with White Press Sports. Congratulations to them. The Baidu Research used a two-stage paradigm with a grounding module to address replay grounding tests that lead to amazing results. We have them here with us. They will now present their work. Hello, everyone. In this video, we will share our method that achieved the state of the arm performance in the replay grounding task in SoCNet V2 Challenge. We are the Baidu research team. We have five people participating in this challenge including full-time employees and interns. We initiate a project called VPress Sports in Baidu Research. Currently, we have a large-scale multimodal soccer data set and highlight generation systems and production platform. We use a two-stage pipeline to solve this replay grounding problem. We first use multiple action recognition models to extract the features for each video. Then we use a grounding model to link the replace to our original actions. The baseline methods use per-frame features extracted by ResNet for train on ImageNet. However, we believe that the features that are tailored for the soccer broadcast videos can improve the performance of the replay grounding test. We fine tune multiple action recognition models on snippets of SoccerNet V2 videos with a classification task using the event labels. And in the test stage, we also ex extract the features from videos on a sliding window rather than on single frames. In this way, our features are more relevant to the task seen and contain more temporal information. Our feature extractors include five different types of models, including TPN, GTA, VTN, IR, CSN, and I3D Slow. They are all top performers on standard action recognition benchmarks. We concatenate these extracted features along the feature dimension to obtain a large, powerful feature. We use the same setup for input and output for our replay grounding module, but change the network. Recall that the baseline context-aware loss function more negative method takes in two video clips as input, run each through a network of feature extractors with shared weights. 
The extracted feature pyramids are concatenated, and finally, two predictions are made. The probability of being the original clip of the replay and the offset of the replay clip in the candidate clip. Before considering the network structure, we do some initial data analysis. The above diagram shows the cumulative distribution of the original event start versus the replay clip start with certain thresholds. As we can see, 93% of the clips fall within 120 seconds, so we will mask out everything outside of 120 seconds for inference and training, since our features have seen full videos in pre-training already. We use a transformer structure for the replay grounding module. The reason is twofold. One, the transformer network could learn relationships more directly compared to weight sharing through extracting feature pyramids. Two, training takes four minutes per epoch and training is stopped in 40 epochs. So one round of training takes only about three hours. For the specific network structure, the input takes features of a candidate clip and features of a replay clip. The features are taken from the feature extractor we explained, and an additional coordinate dimension from 0 to 1 is added to each sequence to help learn the eventual offset of replay position. Then the feature sequences are concatenated. Then we add sine cosine positional encoding, then run through four encoding layers of dimension, hidden dimension 128 with four heads. Then a sigmoid activation is applied, and we get two numbers representing replay probability and offset. We apply BCE loss to train the replay probability and L2 loss for the positional offset. Here are our experimental results. We denote the baseline grounding module as CMN and ours as TF. As you can see in the table, comparing the baseline results in row 1 and our results in row 2, Taking fine-tuned features as input significantly improved grounding results. In addition, more diverse features extracted using different action recognition models leads to further improvement if you compare row 2 and row 5. Another observation is that large batch size achieves superior performance. Most importantly, our grounding module, the transformer, is very efficient and effective. We also implemented several post-processing techniques, including filtering, fusion, and NMS that proved to be effective. Please check out our GitHub repo at github.com slash research slash vpressforce. Our features will be released to support reproducible research. Also, stay tuned for our text report, including implementation details on archive. For any questions or collaborations, please contact vidpress.support at baidu.com. Mm, thank you, well done. What an amazing leaderboard we have. We'd like to take a moment to express our gratitude to all of you who participated in the Soccer Nebitu Challenge. It was an interesting experience with you. Since the grounding was a novel test, there was a lag in the first weeks of the challenge. But in the final weeks, we had interesting competitions with more than 40 submissions and great results. We come to an end with the Soccer Net V2 Challenge in this year. But let's look at it as a start for new ones. We are enthusiastically look forward to hear from you and see you in the next year. Amazing works. Congratulations again, guys. All right. It's now time to draw a few conclusions before bringing our Dear Soconet V2 challenge to an end. Let's start with take-home messages that we can extract from the great presentations that we have just seen. Overall, it seems that to tackle both action spotting and replay grounding, it's important to obtain features that are fine-tuned on soccer data. All the methods scoring above 60% average MAP fine-tuned their feature extractor. Most of them are frame-based, but it also appears that temporal aggregation in small video snippets is required to gather the natural context surrounding the actions and improve performances. To further boost your scores, don't hesitate to concatenate features obtained from different feature extractors. Some of them can be 2D, others can be 3D. 
it looks like they all have their own specificities and are able to capture different kinds of information. Besides, it also seems interesting to merge some classes in a first step and split them in a second step. Some clever action-specific data augmentation may also help. For the replay grounding, limiting the target action to be located within the one or two minutes of video before the replay seems to be an easy way to reach higher performances than our simple baseline. Now, there is an interesting challenge in grounding the remaining replays. How can this be done efficiently? Anyway, our tasks are not entirely solved yet, so maybe you can find a way to further improve over our strong leaders. Organizing this amazing challenge was a privilege, and it could not have been so successful without a few people. We thank our sponsor, Second Spectrum, for agreeing to reward the best team with $500 per task. Then, of course, our supervisors, Bernard Ganem for Silvio, Kamal Nasrallahi for Maysam, Thomas Moslund for Jacob, and Mark van Drogenbroek for us. Finally, we must thank our amazing participants who helped us grow the Socket V2 community and made this challenge a great success. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. We named the dataset Soconet V2, so hopefully we will get some funding for a V3 and another wonderful challenge. Be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel ACAD Research and other social media to receive our latest updates. And hopefully we can meet you in person next year. Bye! Bye.